Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. Somebody's woken up this morning. Uh, I have several announcements. Uh, the women's uh, group is meeting a week from tomorrow night, February 5th, in the Fellowship Hall at 5.30, 5.30 in the Fellowship Hall a week from tomorrow. Um, there are two spaghetti dinners on uh, February 10th, one being held at Pro, followed by a cake auction, and the other being held at Best Chapel, um, followed by some type of game that they're going to be playing. I can't remember the name of it. But you're welcome to attend uh, e either or, and I encourage you, if you have time, to support our fellow churches in our, our circle. Valentine dinner, uh, February 17th, starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, we need to have sign-ups by uh, next Saturday, uh, so we can make sure we have enough uh, supplies to take care of everybody. I think there was a sign up in the, in the North Dex. Church directory, if you would like your picture in our church directory, Carolyn Crawley is taking pictures, has, has already started, they're being taken in the first room on your right, what used to be called the adult Sunday school room. Uh, so make a time with her that's, that's good for you. She's using a dark blue background, so um, don't wear your dark blue dress or suit or, or whatever. Wear something bright. Um, <coughs> I just want to thank everyone for the uh, awesome response uh, that you all made uh, in uh, bringing in supplies for the tornado victims. Uh, Wayne and Loisel brought uh, two carfuls of, or van folds of stuff to the United Way and to the Red Cross. Um, so thank you very much for, for your support. And I don't know if you have anything else that you want to add to that, please, Ella? Uh, the uh, United Way is meeting uh, met last week, the last part of the week, with the Red Cross, and they're going to have a plan to determine what's going to be needed later on as those families are uh, returning, however they return there. So, uh, so they, there may be, know, they have our telephone numbers to uh, So if there may be a need for yes, additional later on. No more need support. Right now. Okay. And thank, thank you. you. We, we gracious, thank graciously appreciate that. And then there is a trustees meeting uh, that's going to be held right at the back of the church following uh, our service this morning. So if you're a trustee, please gather together at the end of the service. Um, I don't see her here today, but I just want to shout out a congratulations to Allison for placing first in a swim meet that she participated in Friday. Yeah. Are there any other announcements? If not, I encourage you to rise if you're able and join in our call to worship.
holy God, you are deserving of the very best that we have to offer. The devotion of our hearts, the place of honor in our priorities, and the first fruits of our labors. We enter this place and space of worship asking you to be in our midst, to speak your message of love and mercy, conviction and challenge to us. We welcome your spirit, knowing that in so doing, we abandon control and open ourselves in faith and trust to your purposes and plan, rather than our own. Come, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, we pray, and may our worship be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Please join now in our opening in all praise to our redeeming Lord.
So please pray for Kate's sister Sigurna uh, as she goes through some complicated procedures. Yes. Just a shout out, thank you to all those that volunteered the first day. For everyone that uh, came and volunteered on Thursday at the corner table, we had a great time. Yes, Barbara. Who? Junior Oh, Junior. Uh, please lift up Junior Loman's uh, family. Junior went to be with the Lord um, earlier this this past week. Uh, his funeral service, I believe, will be February 10th uh, here at the church at 2 o'clock. We all need to remind ourselves to really mindful of the TPSD, I think it's called, that our servicemen came home with, returned. And particularly my graduating class had a most to a third, if not more, the fellows, our fellows, who had to serve. One of my classmates this week, on early Thursday morning, while we were at the corner table, took his life. Tommy Greenhill, so did you knew Tommy. He was an avid basketball player at Fred B. Ford, and he married his sweetheart, Patty Sides, who is a sister to Lorraine Sides Romy, that goes uh, as a member of Ebenezer. Keep that family in your prayer. We were at mother-in-law's funeral on Wednesday over at Startown, and he was not at the service. And several of our classmates questioned, as a, you know, and someone said, I think Tommy's sick. We really don't know at this point what was going on. But please keep that family, which is the Tommy Greenfield family, in your prayers. Thank you, Louisa. This post-traumatic stress disorder is um, a horrible disease that um, affects so many. We need to keep those folks in our prayers and, and be by their side as, as much as we can continue to lift them up. Yes. So prayers from uh, Marilyn's brother Dennis and his wife Evelyn as they struggle uh, with age-related issues. <coughs> my, I think that uh, <laughs> lift up uh, Kelly's brother who's recovered from cancer surgery. He had this past week. Lift up Kelly. Uh, his brother, as he recovers from uh, cancer surgery. <coughs> it's good to have Gail and George back today. Yes. Yes. With good reports. Please, yes. Uh, prayers for the entire McGee family. They always pray for everybody else, but they've really been through a lot the last couple of months. And it's good to see everybody here, and I hope our whole church family just pray that they can dodge a few speak ups from now on. So continue prayers for the McGee family as they grieve the loss of Rodeo, their, their horse, um, and all the other stuff that they've been struggling with, uh, sickness and illness and whatever. Uh, it's good for us to pray for each other. Just because we're here doesn't mean that we don't need prayer. We all need prayer every day. Please lift up uh, Josie as she uh, went to the hospital yesterday. Don't have um, details yet, but please keep her in prayer. So prayers for Christine, Christine and her mother, and, and her mother. 
Any other Joyce concerns? If not, let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we uh, thank you for the opportunity to get up this morning and to um, take a step into this day that you prepared especially for us. Lord, we uh, thank you for the many, many ways in which you interact with us and uh, ways that sometimes we don't even realize uh, that you're there walking away, lifting us up, protecting us, guiding us, leading us. Lord, for uh, those that um, have passed on in this last week or so, Lord, to be with their families as they grieve that loss. Lord, give them um, a sense of your presence uh, as they uh, go through that grieving process. Lord, for those uh, that are struggling with uh, illness and disease of any sort or, or kind, Lord, uh, extend your healing touch. Uh, let your touch heal, heal their bodies, Lord, and restore them to uh, the people that you've created them to be, that they might go on and live the lives that you have created them to live. Lord, thank you for this body of Christ gathered here this morning. Lord, we, we lift each other up in prayer and support each other as we all have struggles that we're going through and sometimes uh, we, we verbally express them but other times um, we keep them to ourselves. But Lord, you know every single detail um, it's going on in every single one of us, Lord. So we raise those issues up to you, uh, into your most capable hands. And now, Lord, as we close this time in prayer, we close it with the words that your Son Jesus gave us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite our children and youth to come forward for the children and youth message.
strangest things that ever happened to me was one day I got picked up. Now it wasn't just any ordinary grab and whatever. You see, I was with my high school choir, which was at a Fellowship of Christian Athletes conference in Columbia, South Carolina, in the University of South Carolina's big coliseum. And there was a fellow there who came to speak. His name Paul Edward Anderson. He was known as the strongest man in the world. Now, he had the choir come up on the stage, and he had a table that was kind of like the altar table here. It was really heavily built. And he had the 12 of us sit on that table. And then Paul walked around behind the table and stooped down. There was a harness on the bottom of the table. And he stuck his head underneath it. Mommy. And he squared his feet. And then he picked us up. All 12 of us. A little bit over a ton of young men. I was up on the table over here on the end because that was one of the lighter weights. And I was looking down off the table, off the edge of the stage. And it was a long way down. And it was kind of scary. But here we were, all of us on the table, and Mr. Anderson stepped around the microphone and without looking, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In 1957, Paul Anderson, on the third attempt, last chance he had, lifted more weight in a squat than anyone else had ever lifted. It was his third try, last stab at it. What do you think he did before he did that? He asked God to give him help because he didn't have the strength within himself. He was able to humble himself and ask the Lord for the additional strength to do what he could in the world. I want you all to understand this one thing. When you are at the end of your strength, when you don't have it within yourself to take the next step, you can always call upon the Lord. And you can take comfort and have victory in the power of His life. Because there will be dark times in your life. You'll need to be able to call on Him. And never, ever, ever be afraid. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, you are our strength. You are our shield. You are our comfort. Be with us each day as we go about this life and help us to 
share with others the glory of your strength. This we pray in Messiah's holy name. Amen. Thank you, God.
to in 1 Corinthians 8, through 8 verses 1, 8 through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of them process knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. For hence, as the eating of the food for eating of the food, the two idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are for, whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has the knowledge, since some become so accustomed to idols, now they shall, now they still think, of the food that they eat as food offered to an idol, and their consistence consists begin weak and defeated. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For it other, for it other is sees you. We possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol. May not, since their consistence is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols. So by your knowledge, these weak believers, for whom Christ died and destroyed, but when thus sin against members of your family and the wounds of their consistence, when it weak in your sin against Christ, therefore, is food and cause of their failing. I will never eat meat so I may not cause one of them to fail. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, may the silence in the sanctuary be a reminder that when you speak, it's not always audible. That you're speaking to us all the time, and we just need to do a better job of listening. So Lord, be with us all, open our minds and our hearts to what you would have us learn. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm sure that all of us at some time or another have witnessed verbal battles between people. I'm sure that we've seen the people whom we love draw lines between themselves and others as they proclaim their position. We may have seen these battles as children as we watched our parents fight. Or we who were parents have witnessed the verbal battles between our children which seem to go on relentlessly without end. In these battles, we want to scream, Stop it! I can't take it anymore. If you're going to fight, go and do it somewhere else. Or perhaps these battles occur between your best friends, and at those times you may feel that you're drawn right into the middle of their fight. You may feel that you have to choose between them, and you don't want to. The places that we work are also areas where fights occur. The workplace seems to produce fights between people. And as sad as it seems, those same fights 
even occur in the church as well. It seems that no matter where we go, sooner or later, there's going to be a verbal battle. And we're going to be a witness to it. Well, I'd like for us all to think this morning about the last verbal battle that you may have witnessed. Not one that you personally participated in, rather a battle between other people. And I'd ask you to stop and think about that argument, and especially think about your feelings while the battle was occurring. Was the last battle you heard at work occurring between two of your peers? You headed for your office thinking that you're not dumb enough to get caught in the middle of that fight. But as an afterthought, you wondered, what a silly issue. Why don't these people grow up? Perhaps you felt as you watched and listened to that battle that both sides did have a point. Each had a legitimate point to make and neither side had a monopoly on the truth. Each side could contribute to the issue. If only those involved in that fight would just stop and listen to each other. Maybe each other would have the opportunity to grow. If they'd only stop and listen, they could see where the other person was coming from and they could grow closer together. As I watch people fight on television or even in real life, I often think to myself what the fights being fought are really about and that they're really actually quite silly. I think as I watch that people ought to be smarter than the way that they're actually acting. Then I'm also called to realize that other people who watch me are probably saying the same exact thing. I realize that when I watch someone else, the issue is usually silly. But when I get locked into a fight, the issue is never, ever usually silly. The issue becomes a matter of life and prestige. The issue becomes so important that I dig my heels in and become very stubborn. The issue becomes a fight between the good guys and the bad guys, and we all know who the good guy is. We all know who the good guy is, right? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> but we also know who the bad guy is. The bad guy is out there. Quite a few years ago, Miller Brewing Company ran a commercial for their light beer. Maybe some of you might remember it. There are two people drinking beer, and one person says, that really, that beer tastes really, really good, but it has less calories, and therefore it's less filling. But the other protests that the merit of the beer isn't the calorie count, but in the actual taste of the beer. Well, the argument is on. Less calories, better taste. Less calories, better taste. Calories, taste. At this point, they're ready to kill each other. It never draws on them that they both might actually be right. That it does have less calories, and it still tastes good. It's the good guy versus the bad guy. It's the taste guy versus the calorie guy. The lines are drawn, and the fight is on. Well, this morning in our scripture, there's a battle going on in one of the Corinthian congregations. And as we think about what Emory read for us, we may be very tempted to say, what a stupid thing to fight about. 
There shouldn't be issues at all for the people in that congregation. And yet, we look at the text. The lines are very sharply drawn. The people are locked into a position. If we were there, we would begin to understand that the issue being discussed is every bit as important as these people and some of them pressing moral issues that have been dealing with the last couple of years. It's every bit as important as the issue of abortion and same-sex marriage and the divinity of Christ. It's every bit as important as our present day argument over how to interpret the scriptures. That is, are we liberals or are we fundamentalists? For those people in Corinth, the argument was centered on the foundation of what they actually believed. The issue had gotten to such a point that the congregation had divided. Opposing groups would sit on opposite sides of the aisle. When the pastor said something, they would look at each other and say, as children say, I told you so. <laughs> the congregation was literally split. Remember back a year ago? It was happening right here in a lot of other churches as well. In that congregation, there were people who came from the Jewish background. They knew the law very, very well. And the law told them, if you ate meat that was offered to, up to an idol, to a false god, then you were also worshiping that god. The act is idolatry. And they had been told again and again there was only one God, and therefore they were never, ever to worship another God. Therefore, you never eat meat offered to a false God. Well, perhaps we need to understand that, according to the Greeks, an offering of an animal was taken to the temple of a God. That animal was then sacrificed to that God. The God got a part of that animal in the sacrifice, but here's the, the rub. The priest also got part of that animal. And they would take that part and they would sell it to the local butcher. He in turn would sell that animal to his customers. Now, knowing all of this, the issue became whether or not you could buy meat from the local butcher knowing that he sold meat that was offered to false gods. And any self-respecting Christian would say absolutely no. Then there was the other side of the congregation. That side that said they had heard what Paul had said, and they were going to practice their freedom in the gospel. After all, didn't Jesus come to free us from the law? <coughs> it's by Christ that we are saved and not by the meat we eat or that we don't eat. They were not going to allow a new legalism to separate them from the love of Christ. They liked the butcher's shop and no one was going to tell them what to do. So those lines were drawn. They would come to worship or other congregational activities and divide into their separate groups. They would be like brother and sister living under the same roof. The only constant between them was bickering and fighting. And anyone not immediately involved was driven away by that bickering and that fighting. And it's into the midst of this situation that Paul came with this morning's epistle lesson. In the midst of that lesson, these words appear. Haven't you ever heard that we worship the same God? Don't you know that there's only one God, and that God has created one side of the congregation? And that God has also created the other side of the congregation. And that God has also created both sides of the congregation. 
And if a good God creates good people on one side of the congregation, doesn't he do the same thing and create good people on the other side of the congregation? Paul's saying to us that we need to stop and we need to listen and to respect all who speak. Everyone who speaks is a child of the same God. Could it be that each side of the congregation at Corinth came with a very high standard and very high motivations? Could it be that the one side was saying that they realized the sacrifice was made for them in the death of Jesus Christ and therefore they could not eat meat that had been offered to idols? The people on the other side were saying that they too recognized the sacrifice of the crucifixion and therefore they didn't want to water down that sacrifice with a new legalism. In like manner, the same God who created the people who like less calories also created the people who like good taste. That's profound. It says to us that the same God who created the pro-life people also created the pro-choice people. And the same God who created children also created parents. And the same God who created students also created teachers. And the same God who created employees also created employers also created employees. And the same God who created liberals also created conservatives. The same God who created me is the same God who created the people with whom I am uncomfortable. Can it be that Paul is saying to us that when we get into it with another person, there comes a time when we need to just stop and remind ourselves that the other person comes into the argument with their good intentions. And the other person can come with lofty ideals, the same as I can come with my lofty ideals. And that person needs to be heard and also needs to be respected the same as I need to be heard and respected. If you've been a victim of one of these squirmishes, have you ever stopped and prayed for the other person? What a novel idea. If I couldn't change him, God could. Have you ever noticed how pious we become in our prayers as we pray to God to show another just how wrong the other is? If we pray that God would show them their errors, maybe after a while the prayer can begin to change the other person. No longer did, or no longer would you pray that God show him his errors. Rather, you pray that God bless him with gifts that God had given to him. Maybe after a week of such prayer, things just might begin to change. The anger begins to leave you. The ocean becomes a river and then a creek. The God who created me created your estranged friend and who once again had become a very good and close friend. It seems to me that in the human condition, we'll disagree with each other and we'll fight with each other. That's a given. That light beer commercial by Miller puts it so beautifully. There are those who like good taste and there are those who like less calories. And there are those who like both. Each side gets so busy defending its position that neither one can hear what the other person is saying. Can't they both be right? I'd encourage you that in the next time that you see a commercial similar to that, or maybe you might even 
to see that commercial. Or the next time that you see people fighting, the next time you get sucked into a disagreement, that you stop and you remind yourself that Paul says to you that the God who created low calories also created flavor. And that the God who created that person with whom you're fighting is the same God that created you. Paul puts it so beautifully when he says that we all worship one and the same God and that God has created us all. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for your word. Even though sometimes your word is very difficult for us to deal with. But Lord, you created us all in your own infinite wisdom. And as part of that infinite wisdom, Lord, you didn't create us all the same. Because if you did, we'd all be bored with each other. No, Lord, you gave each of us special and distinct gifts. You gave us different looks and different color eyes and different color hair and some of us more hair than others. But Lord, you all created us with a heart to love you. So Lord, in lieu of getting into a fight or a squirmish over a silly thing. Maybe your convictions are, are strong and maybe the other person's convictions are just as strong or maybe stronger. But Lord, I pray that you help each one of us to understand the other person, to stop and listen to what they're saying. And maybe, just maybe, they'll stop and they'll listen to us. And maybe we can be at peace. Because that's what this world needs, is more peace and more love with each other. So Lord, thank you for all of this. Help us to take it to wrap it up in a ball and hide it inside of us. Help us to unwrap it piece by piece as we need it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise as we sing our closing hymn.
benediction, a short poem called, Isn't It Strange? Isn't it strange that princes and kings and clowns that caper in sawdust rings and common folk like you and me are the builders of eternity? To each is given a bag of tools, a shapeless mass and a book of rules. And each must take, ere time is flown, a stumbling block or a stepping stone. The choice is up to you. <clears throat> are you going to be a stumbling block or are you going to be a stepping stone? to something better. Go, make that decision on your own. Be filled with the peace and the love and the forgiveness and the mercy and grace of our Lord. Have a great week, everyone. God bless you all.